Wayne, I was telling you how easy the Fuji flow meter is to use, and I thought I would just have a quick run through of how some of the settings are done. Um, first things first, uh, the instrument has an SD card in the base here, so that all the data is saved uh, right to a normal full-size SD card. They used to supply them with 512 um, megabyte, half a gig, uh, cards and that was enough to hold two years of data so you know uh, there's plenty on the other side is a USB mini B so you can also connect to the computer I tend to find using the, um, the SD card is nice and easy because you never have a bad Windows day so when we power up uh, and keep in mind those rainbow effects are simply the uh, filming of an LCD and we enter on English Okay, this is your default screen that will come up when you're measuring. But for now, the first thing we want to do is set up uh, the meter to read the pipes that we're measuring. So if I hit menu and go to site setup, now we have uh, memories such that you can have various pipes around the factory, name them as you want them. So, you know, pipe one, drain pipe two, etc. But for now, let's say we're doing a new setup. So we go to process setting and we hit enter. There are four screens to go through here, only a couple of which you'll probably use. So first of all, we want to set the outer diameter of the pipe. Uh, that can either be the circumference or the outer diameter. Circumference is nice and easy. And then we simply put in the pipe size. So let's say this case, the pipe is 100 millimeters. So we'll go 100 millimeters. We now put in the pipe material. Um, so it's simply a matter, there's a drop down here and you'll see there's a lot of pipes on here. Carbon, steel, stainless, copper, polypropyl, acrylic, PVDF, etc. There's also one called others. So most of your pipes will be there and it will be nice and easy. Um, but if you have a pipe that is not on this list, all one needs to do is find out the uh, sound speed through that material and you can enter a sound speed there. But let's say for now uh, we're in a food situation, so we're going to have stainless steel. Now we put in the wall thickness. That's an important measurement because as you've correctly pointed out, it is a time of flight machine. So the, what pipe wall thickness is important. I can't remember whether, whether I put on your quote a thickness gauge or not, but most people when they buy one of these uh, buy a or $900 thickness gauge to measure the, the wall thickness. And again, we enter on this. A lot of cases you'll find four millimeter stainless, as you well know. So let's, so in this case, we've got a hundred millimeter pipe, four millimeter wall thickness. And we go to the next screen. This is one of four. So right, I'll push the right button here. Process settings, enter. Uh, so we'll go to the next screen, uh, which is whether or not there is a lining on the pipe. I've never used this in, in, in live fire, um, but there may be a time you need it. The kind of fluid. Uh, now, obviously in most cases it's going to be water, but again there's a drop down here with a whole lot of different fluids on here. Uh, ammonia, alcohol, benzene, but you know, as you can see on screen. Um, and it's simply a matter of entering the one you want. If you don't have the fluid that you want, others allows you to enter a fluid which is not on the list. There are two things you need to know. One is the kinematic viscosity and the other is the speed of sound through that fluid. But let's, for the sake of argument, select water. And then we're on to screen uh, three of four. And the fourth screen is the output type. Um, basically, there are different sensor bars that can be used with this uh, instrument. And but in your case, you're gonna have one that's covering that range we discussed. So that'll be permanently set. And then you can change the output power, if you like, to increase the signal. Um, if you need to increase the signal, it's pointing at something being wrong because 99% of the time, it's almost a plug and play. You put in the data, you connect it up, uh, and it just goes. Now we hit escape, 
and we go into the uh, the back to the process settings. Now I've put something wrong because normally it would come up here and say sensor spacing for this setup should be X. And in this case it said that it's 0.0. .0. So obviously I've done something wrong in my setup. We have wall thickness, we have circumference, we have no lining, we have water, we have V method. Oh, I've probably selected the wrong bar type. So let's go for the smaller one because of the size I've selected. And we'll escape. Right, there we go. So that was the problem. I'd selected a, or it was defaulting to the uh, flu, to, to, the, to the pipe size that was too small for that particular setup. So it's saying that in this particular case, we would set 11.3 millimeters as the spacing on the bar. I'll show you the setting up the bar in a moment. And then we would simply again uh, hit escape and escape and we're into the measuring, uh, the measuring screen. Now we can have three lots of measurement displayed at once. Um, you can, most commonly I see people using two measures of flow and you can perhaps have a percentage of flow there as well if you want. Um, so again, it's a drop down menu. At the moment it's set to cubic meters per hour. Uh, but if we enter on this, uh, we can again select uh, one of any, many, many, many different um, uh, amounts that you want, litres a minute, litres a second. Uh, there's even some of the specialised ones for beer, barrels per hour, barrels per day. So we'll go with litres per minute. That's the common one we use. And in this case, we've got a second screen showing velocity. But again, you could shift that and put the second screen to be something else. Uh, so we'll say instead of velocity, we'll have uh, flow rate again, but in a different measure. Uh, so at this time, we'll leave it at meters cubed per hour, for example. Now, obviously, I have no sensor bar connected, so we see a number of things on screen. Firstly, we see that we have a no receive signal error. Well, of course, that's the case because we don't have anything attached to it. Up on the top screen, we have a number of um, icons showing what's going on. Here we see date and time, which is not correct, but I can fix. Oh, yes, it is correct. Um, we have the signal strength out, the return signal strength, the battery power, and whether an SD card is, is in there or not. And of course, I do not, and I don't have logging turned on. So it's quite clear. Uh, what you're doing. But honestly, as soon as you put it in, in, in that information pack I sent you, there was a photo of a plant which happened to be Silver Fern's Fingand, and we just sat the sensor bar right on top of the pipe with no straps at all, and um, away it went straight away reading. Um, I think that's going to be your main setup on the machine. I'll now quickly show you how to set up the sensor bar.